Thank you, and thanks for having me. I've been told that Danish people are very punctual, so I'm just going to put a, a timer on. Because <laughs> I'm not, so... I'm... If the alarm goes off and I have to, I'm only halfway through it, I'll, I'll, I'll finish up quickly. But, um... Great, well, as uh, Rick has said, I'm from Prohibition Partners. Um, let me just introduce us, or just some of you may know us, but I, I think others don't. So, um, Prohibition Partners, we do market intelligence and market data and strategy consulting on the legal cannabis sector. So what that means today is we're talking exclusively about medical cannabis, um, what, how we do what we do. We have a public facing report, which some of you may see, and they're free to download. So if you haven't seen them, please go on our website, download them. They're, they're sponsored reports that give an overview of the market sector. We don't touch medical issues, um, we don't touch technical issues, but we give an overview of, an overview of the sector, who's playing, so market intelligence. And as I mentioned, um, we do the consulting off the back of that. Now that's, that's me, I run the consulting team, and that's where clients come to us and say, oh, your report's very interesting, but we'd like to go deeper into a certain area. And we tend to do um, that, exactly that. So go deeper into uh, certain parts that so we, we don't do in our public facing reports. That's on the consulting side. We also run a couple of conferences, jointly founded Cannabis Europa and London Cannabis Week, which are coming up in the, in the middle of June. Um, but that's enough about us. These are the reports I mentioned. Um, today, I'm going to take you through our view on the current state of Europe. Um, like I said, the, the Danish opportunity, I think my presentation is titled The Danish Opportunity, but I think the Danish opportunity largely is the European opportunity. And then a little bit at the end about um, the Danish positioning for that. So if we draw on this map, uh, two years ago it would have been very different. Um, five years ago, radically different. The, the news all the time is that new markets in Europe are legalizing. And I think since this map was produced then, Luxembourg also legalized the access to medical cannabis. So and I'll come on to talk about the big gray areas in the middle there, which are um, France and Spain, which are big population centres which haven't yet legalised medical cannabis, but um, I think the, the ball is rolling, the, mo the direction of travel is there, the momentum is there for the legalisation of medical cannabis and access for patients uh, to, to the product. But as, as we'll come on to see, it, the fact it's there doesn't mean that there is um, a great access. And this is what I mean. So I put less than, uh, well, this is what I mean. So. Although markets are legal, um, the amount of patients having access to the, uh, to the product is very small. Now that might be due to supply constraints, particularly in, in Italy and Germany, um, but it's also due to factors such as the doctors getting used to the product, for, for, um, um, insurance companies, reimbursements. So all of these markets, even though it looks greatly positive on this slide, when it comes to the reality of prescribing, um, then it's a different matter. Um, I think I put Dana, Denmark at 1, less than 1,500, but I, I apologise if I got that slightly wrong. Um, but I think it's in that ballpark. Um, but that's after only a year of um, pilot project. And the UK is the big news, because look, at the end of last year, the big fanfare in the UK. Um, the access 1st of, October, 1st of November last year was legalised, but it was doctors were allowed to give access as a special, as an unlicensed medicine, so only doctors on a specialised, uh, a specialised register, and uh, in their in their view. But then the Royal College of Physicians, the doctor's body came out, and their suggestion was to restrict, heavily restrict, the the prescription. The National Health Service and the National Institute of Clinical Excellence, who are the main gate, gatekeeper to prescription in the UK they have yet to um, come out with their guidelines that are coming out in November this year. So, yeah, the UK, highly, highly restricted, but what we've got, 60 odd million people um, as, as total population without, uh, with very, very little trickling through. Um, and also, the supply in Europe last year was reasonably small, if you consider the, the amount of countries or the, the overall patient population of the countries where it is legal. Uh, we've got, um, yeah, about four tons. Where that was coming from, and this, the, this picture will change uh, with, uh, this picture will change as, as Denmark comes on stream, this picture will change as other Canadian companies get EU GMP certification. But at the moment, 
small number of Canadian companies and the Dutch Bedrocamp are producing. Italian military is an interesting one, and the Italian production is highly controlled, highly um, technically narrow um, requirements, resulting in, in supply shortages into, into Italy. So, look, if I just go back and say, well, that's all looks well, fairly negative, right? There's, um, there's limited uh, prescriptions and, and following that limited supply. But we all know that in time, it takes a bit of time to change. Uh, I mentioned the, the momentum for legalization is there and also the level of investment that the industry is seeing globally and is seeing in Europe and specifically in Denmark is a, is a reflection of what's to come. So when I say the European opportunity now, I mean, we obviously the Danish program is one of the most advanced in Europe and it's seeing its own teething problems and it will come. So Denmark as a market itself does present a, an opportunity for Danish producers and I believe that it's a requirement to make sure that patients are served in Denmark before exportation. But the real opportunity is in the rest of Europe. So um, let me come on to talk about how we, we might see that. So this is our published figure. You might see this around. So we believe that in the next 10 years, with, if everything goes right, then it could be up to this figure, which is a big figure from very, almost nothing at the moment. Um, as I say, this is a, 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 um, an indicative figure to show the size of the opportunity, but the interesting thing is how we get there. And so, um, in this section, I'm going to talk a little bit about each of these, these parts. I mean, I could spend a long time talking about each of them, so I'll just touch on some of the aspects of cultivation, distribution, and the, the, the real gatekeepers, I believe, are the doctors. So. We talked earlier, I, I put up a slightly different map than this, and I mentioned um, the grey bits in the middle, um, but also, I've also talked about in existing markets, it's not that it's all fully, uh, fully working in those great big population centres of the UK, um, Denmark, oh, sorry, UK, Germany and Poland are, represent a significant part of the European population, and patients in those supposedly legalised markets don't have access. So within those markets, we're going to have to see, and it's a matter of time, look, everyone looks at Canada, Canada's got about 1% of the adult population with um, receiving prescriptions, and I think the Canadian market is, Canada is particularly liberal in its attitude to, to prescribing. Um, so we've got a lot, and that took a long way to go, that's nearly 20 years of some form of medical system in Canada. So, look, Europe, we can't really criticise these markets. I mean, regulators need to get comfortable with it. Um, patients need to get comfortable with it. Um, and, and doctors, doctors particularly. But also scientists. The science, as we just heard, I believe, in, in Danish. Um, as we've just heard, I mean, this is all starting. So it's, it's natural. It takes a little bit of time for markets to, to, to come on stream. Now, but in... In those markets, I think the key is getting doctors comfortable with prescription, doctors understanding the medicine, uh, how it affects a very personalised uh, way of prescribing, uh, which is a step change for them from how, how they've been uh, previously just uh, handing out, or well, not handing out, but previously using licensed medicines with a track record of clinical trials, uh, with a very simplified uh, form of um, dosification. And you see that none of those apply yet to cannabis. It's, it's an off-label, unlicensed medicine, which varies between patient and varies between... Um, and the, and uh, vaporizing is a very unusual way of uh, administering medicine. So doctors need to get comfortable with it. Insurance companies and national health systems need to understand it. And they also need to see prices come down. And the new countries have all of the countries I'm talking about, some of the grey blocks on there, so big population centres of um, France and Spain, all of those markets also need to go through those uh, learning steps that um, uh, the rest of Europe has done, and are they also they need to introduce an efficient regulatory regime. So France, for example, uh, France is going through hearings to understand how they um, should implement it. They it was greenlit by a parliamentary committee at the end of last year. 
Um, Spain we're not quite so sure about, but our hypothesis, given the, there was a recent, um, uh, sorry, I've lost the word, there was a recent, um, uh, bit of, I might say legislation, resolution, sorry, in the European Parliament, whereby, um, whereby the, the parliamentarians encouraged all member states to allow access to medical cannabis. So we believe that dominoes are, have started to fall, and the next five years we'll see all markets, in the next two to three years before we see all markets in Europe allowing patient access. And so all, all of Europe will um, offer a, a market for Danish export. Now, the key to overall, though, the key for the markets to really start to activate is the, are the clinical trials. As the clinical trials come through, that will give everybody I mentioned a, um, an, an encouragement. And um, I'm looking down at my watch, and I told you I, I'm, I'm not very good at timing, so I'll try and speed up with it. Um, the <coughs> another thing that's going to develop in Europe um, is the form factor. So um, flour is being is the primary, the first um, uh, real, real um, medicine on the market. Um, it's that's generally what's consumed in in, uh, in Germany, and I believe it's what's, what will be first produced uh, here in Denmark. But we're already moving towards oil, and over the longer term, we're going to see new forms of delivery systems. So, some form of to, to enable measured dose. And this will make this goes back to what I was saying about doctors being comfortable with it, because this will be something that's familiar to a doctor to enable um, a measured dose every time of the same substance. Um, and we'll see that reflected in. Dutch prescriptions and um, the Danish prescriptions there. So only 8% last year in, in Denmark were, were flower prescriptions. And I think Germany at the moment, their, their monograph doesn't really allow, although I think Aurora has just registered an oil in, in, in Germany, but it makes it difficult um, in the short term to get um, oil into Germany. But I think without a doubt, this is the way it's going to go. And it's necessary for to, to enable doctors to get comfortable. Cultivation. Now, Denmark isn't the only country in Europe which, uh, which uh, saw the opportunity for um, allowing cultivation. Um, at present, really, it's, it's very minimal. I mentioned I showed Bedrican being the key producer earlier. It was very, very tiny production in Czech Republic and the Italian military. Um, there's a bit, of a, a bit of a race on, so the, the market will see a lot of European production. From southern Europe, um, that sun belt across Portugal, Spain, uh, Greece, and Cyprus, um, but also more and more Canadian companies are getting EU GMP certification, so that will mean more product coming over from Canada. And there is obviously the low cost jurisdictions. There's a lot of noise coming out of Colombia, Lesotho, Thailand, um, we're sort of sun belt countries. Well, not so much like uh, it's Colombia and. Um, and Thailand exactly on the equator, 12 hours daylight, 12 hours sunlight, um, so 12 hours daylight, 12 hours uh, darkness, and uh, low labor costs. So all of this is potentially competitive, low cost production coming in. But the key, so the key will be uh, finding routes to market. And that's, so where is, this is just to wrap up, because um, to, well, to, to, to talk a little bit about that point, because yeah, the, we're seeing that there are it's going to be slow, um, slow build-up of patients, and a lot of production coming online. So the key is understanding how to get the product into the uh, into the pharmacies across Europe. And um, to date, the distribution channels are mainly centered around uh, either special um, special prescriptions, uh, name patient import. Um, across Europe, but Germany we're seeing specialized medical cannabis distributors starting up, and but it's the, 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 the product is not yet of a sufficient scale to interest the big distributors. So getting uh, your product or a producer's product um, known and trusted um, by the prescriber and also distributed uh, into the pharmacies is going to be key. So if we look at the, the left-hand side here, we've got uh, cultivation. Now, um, I've, um, Denmark has been, first, been very quickly with a very flexible regulatory regime to encourage um, large-scale cultivation. Um, here, here we are in the center of the, 
what's it, 70% of the greenhouses in, in this local area with um, tremendous um, efficiency and um, experience in, in growing in, in, in horticulture. So Denmark is well set to leverage that in. The size of the production here allows for great economies of scale. And um, yeah, so on the cultivation side, uh, Denmark and Denmark will be driving the low cost, um, the low cost, lower end of the cost curve in Europe. Um, now, if we look across out, out of Denmark, there aren't any exports yet. Um, so, and some of the producers in Denmark are already integrated with uh, distribution channels in in Germany specifically, and some of the other countries, Poland. Uh, Poland is the one that springs to mind. So, um, some producers are already uh, have have that already set up, but it will be key to to get that into place. Um, the, on the positive side, though, you uh, again being a first mover, going to be one of the first countries with um, commercial production in Europe because um, Germany's way behind, Holland's already at capacity. So Denmark is well set to be one of the first countries with commercial production exporting. So when those markets open up. Denmark is already at the front of the queue in terms of um, establishing those uh, those distributions, uh, those distribution relationships. And then uh, the doctor. Now, clearly, I said earlier, I think the Danish market is going to be is going to be. I mean, obviously, very key. It's still, like, I mean, what five and a half million people. Um, so it's not a huge market, but it's not a, a, a sort of a, a zero market either. It's. Uh, but when we look outside of Denmark, uh, I could see that the Danish producers will be. Uh, able to leverage the, their experience within the local market, um, which, as I say, is a, a sort of an advanced and, and liberalised uh, regulatory regime. They'll be able to take that first uh, first mover advantage outside, and hopefully, off the back of some of these clinical trials, be able to show, demonstrate um, to, the, to the key gatekeepers going back again, the doctors in other markets. You've done it with your doctor, with you. You've got clinical trials in Denmark, and uh, that the products and the see, I'm sorry. Dismissed. Three minutes left. So, um, but that's that's about it. Just to wrap up, I think the the key message is that the European market is just starting. The dominoes are starting to fall in terms of regulatory. The build-up is going to be slow but steady. Um, so, what's key to unlocking the market are firstly the clinical trials. The evidence needs to be there before it's widely widely prescribed, and then. Um, it's accessing that market, and that's through. That's going to be through establishing distribution relationships and um, and demonstrating that product has comes from a, um, a reliable source, which has shown consistency. And I think um, Denmark's well positioned to take advantage of that. Thank you. Speak that just out of your uh, forecast of 58 million uh, billion euros here in, in the near future, how large part of that is based on recreational use? That that that's for medical. So zero. Yeah, we for that for that number. But as I say, that's at a ten-year horizon with market potential. But but yes, it's um, it's medical only. Any other questions? You have your chance. <laughs> oh, so next slide. There's my email, there's my telephone number. So uh, if, uh, yeah, if any questions, then please do follow up. Thank you so much. Thank you. And you know that the thing is designed for the optimist, because we are so optimistic in this uh, business. And uh, sometimes you, when you see it, you know why it's called the optimist. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks very much.